Welcome to the Page One Podcast, a twice-weekly podcast featuring a variety of guests and thought leaders on topics ranging from channel strategies to tariffs, influencer marketing, best-in-class product launches, and all the details about how to accelerate your e-commerce sales with the big box retailers, or what we call our commerce Now, here's your host, Luke Peters. Thanks for joining us on the Page One Podcast. I'm your host, Luke Peters of Newer Appliances and also CEO of Retail Band Digital Strategy Agency. And right now we're in a coronavirus world and I know that everyone's mind is on that. So I'm going to adapt these interviews uh, to ensure that you the listeners are getting the most out of our podcast. And you can expect us to get right to the point, provide valuable insights with a focus on COVID-19 impacts. And, you know, I know everybody's worried about COVID-19, so we'll direct questions in that area, but also about our businesses and how we can continue to grow our businesses. And so let's jump right into it. In this episode, you're going to learn from Kevin Walker about how to grow a strong brand in these challenging times. And as a teenager, Kevin rebranded a small gift shop in Washington, D.C., doubled its revenues in one year. Since that time, he's been providing successful brand strategy solutions to some of the most demanding clients in the world. So we're going to focus on brand strategy brand design and brand communication, but with the COVID-19 slant to it. So Kevin, go ahead and um, add anything you would like to that introduction and kind of in a more tangible terms, briefly describe what you do for the audience. Uh, Sure, sure. Uh, Thank you very much for having me. Um, Well, in a nutshell, what Boardwalk does is we build meaningful bonds between things that need to be marketed and their markets. And that bond is really the brand. Uh, we've been in business since 1990. We work with all types of businesses. And our services fall into three main buckets. The first one would be brand strategy. And we make a business case for how a company, a product, or a service should be positioned to gain competitive advantage over its rivals. And we have a proprietary methodology for doing that. It's, it involves qualitative research and analysis. We call that the deep dive. And our aim is for our clients to really hear the voice of their market and see their brand through their customers' eyes. Uh, We don't write the brand strategy, uh, but we facilitate our clients uh, gaining the marketing clarity they need to write their own, uh, one that is authentic and and theirs alone. Uh, The second bucket is uh, brand design. Once our clients have that clarity, uh, then we move forward by uh, providing creative services needed to bring their brands to life and actually start working for them. So we create integrated customer experiences that support our clients, uh, uh, support and advance our clients' brand strategy. And that could include uh, brand architecture, naming, positioning taglines, slogans, key messaging, uh, logos, visual identity systems, websites, trade shows, um, stationary collateral, anything that's needed to bring the brand strategy to life. And then the third thing we do, the third bucket, is something we call brand agency. We operationalize uh, the brand strategy through marketing communication. Uh, So at our client's request, we could uh, either work as an outsourced CMO, as a contracted agency, or as a partner integrated into their existing marketing teams. Um, We create and execute and measure on-brand marketing campaigns, both online and in traditional media. And we design, implement um, all their advertising, social media, blogs, newsletters, trade shows, all that. We do everything, uh, make sure that all the advertising messaging stays on-brand. And our experience has shown that this one, two, three approach leads to increased awareness, demand, and revenue for our clients. Uh, In most market sectors, the ROI on that is usually about 15 to 20 years of year over year sales growth. So that's us. Great. And, uh, and thanks for that and describing kind of your one, two, three strategy there. And Kevin, how many total employees just so we can give the listeners a sense of the company size? We've never been more than three employees. Uh, we put teams together, uh, to work on specific projects. Um, if there's a naming project that we're working on, then I might have like three writers working on that with me. Yeah. Uh, but once that's done, they go back to their freelance life. Great. And um, awesome. So you guys are at Boutique and you guys are, you know, really diving deep with your clients. And t- 
talk to us about, you know, companies are now focusing on the near term and obviously branding is often, you know, a long-term ROI game. Um, how has that kind of changed your business or changed with your clients? Um, and also secondly, you know, how would you speak to that line of thought when talking to clients? Well, um, situations in flux right now. So I, I'm, we're still kind of feeling that one out. Um, but truth be told, most of our clients are always looking at this year's sales and very seldom looking down the road. Uh, so it hasn't changed much for us yet. Although, you know, like I say, it's a fluid situation. Uh, who knows what tomorrow might bring. Yep. But right now in terms of our, uh, our operations, we usually, when we, when we do our qualitative research, that involves a lot of one-on-one interviews and we usually like to do those in person, but uh, it looks like we'll be doing them by zoom for foreseeable future, which is fine. You know, it's fine. Um, and then in terms of our sales, that did come to a screeching halt because uh, we work mostly with CEOs of uh, small and middle market companies. And once the virus hit, they had a lot on their plate and they really couldn't concentrate on what we do. Um, but so we stopped the sales calls for about a week, um, but we're back at it now. Yeah. And how, how does your sales process look? And I, and I asked that just cause it's really interesting to kind of understand how, you know, smaller creative agencies like yours might work, um, especially with limited resources. So is it more of an email driven, um, sales process or is it a phone driven and, and really curious and, and, you know, kind of in briefly how that works? Well, for years it had been phone driven, but, uh, these days we, we start with email Yep. and, um, we just have to make sure that our emails aren't tone deaf to the situation. It, it's tough when everybody's watching the news every day, what, what type of uh, email provider and, and how do you get the listing for those um, clients? Uh, we go off sales navigator, LinkedIn sales navigator. Oh God. Okay. Wow. So you guys were having to do really specific work to identify a client off navigator and then drop them into an email campaign and, and, um, um, kind of work through those different, um, series of emails. And that, that's kind of the start of your sales process. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, uh, then the moment anybody shows any interest at all, then we, uh, we get more personal. Yeah. Any automation on sales navigator or does that have to be done by a human on that end? Uh, we automate. Yep. Um, we use an outfit called, uh, copilot AI and, uh, but we've only been with them for not even, not even two months now. So, uh, but so far we're pretty happy with the results. Yeah. And and I know we have a lot of, uh, thanks for sharing that by the way. And it's awesome to hear that because I've, I've done some work through LinkedIn and it can be, you know, like hitting your head against a wall. And it's also annoying for the folks that are on there. Um, But it's, um, you know, it is the world of marketing and sales. And so having that automation, I I guess would, it's kind of like a breath of fresh air. That's another thing, you know, in our line, when we, we always do a good job for our clients, but that means they get 15 to 20 years of, they won't need us again for 15 or 20 years. Yep. Um, So my challenge has always been to reach that CEO at the right moment in that, cycle. Uh, so with automation, we can really up the numbers game and, and have more success. But like I say, we just started this campaign and then the virus hit. <laughs> now let's talk about that. So, so how should, so CEOs are, are turning their phones off. Listen, you know, I'm in that camp too. We're, we're focused on the, the product now and, and, uh, you know, making sure we're making the right moves mm-hmm. and cutting costs and everything. But, um, you know, so specific to COVID-19, you know, what would you advise other businesses? And, and what I mean specifically is you're, you're now selling these services and performing these services and CEOs are like, Hey, we got to cut costs. How can you show or talk about more mid range returns? You know, like, cause you got a good answer earlier where you said, look, all your clients are looking at returns this year and not five years into the future. Right. So what tell, tell us more, because I think this is a really um, important thing for customers to think, you know, in the middle of COVID-19, and when they're talking about branding, what really can they expect to see in a three to six or nine month time frame? And and specifically, why is that? Because there's you know better Instagram account that's built out, and then they use and deploy that, or you know what what is the how do they get the results, and why do they get the results? Well, there's a lot in that question. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Uh, in terms of giving uh, your listeners tactical advice, I, I'm not sure that. Uh, each one of them is going to have their own situation and their own uh, tactics that they'll have to follow. But 
in general, I can tell you two th- things uh, that I'm telling all my clients is that one, communication now is more important than ever. If all your customers are gone and you need to find a way to let them know that the tribe is still intact and that uh, you know, you're still in business. Uh, so regular communication of some sort, whether it's a newsletter or uh, 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 some kind of Zoom session, uh, is is really important to keep your customers close to you, keep them uh, uh, up to date on what's going on with you, you know, be as transparent as you can. Uh, but but in talking about the time frame, you know, just just to that because I think that'd be valuable for the customer. How can you talk specifically to the time frame of results? Um, I think that's on everybody's mind when they make an investment right now. For a mid-sized company, it could take up to six months just to do the strategy part of it. Oh wow! Um, and then uh, the creative part that comes after that could easily be another six months. So if you hire me today, you're probably a year away from launching yep. uh, with a with a new brand. And then you, you'll see some uh, impact right away. Uh, sales usually uh, has an almost immediate uptick. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. But uh, even if it's a small uptick, you know, like uh, that's, that's something that you, you shows you that you know your brand is working um, and you can grow that. But for, for a new brand to really take effect and uh, gain full strength, it could be three to four years. Um, so it is a long-term uh, process, but uh, again, uh, it, it it really helps you. <laughs> so yeah. if you, it won't help you through this crisis necessarily, but it'll position you well for the next one. Uh, and you know they come along every so often. Right now, uh, businesses that have strong brands are patting themselves on the back because it's going to help them help see them through this this crisis, no matter however long it lasts. Oh, hundred percent. No, I'm a huge believer and proponent in brand, especially in this era of Amazon. I mean, all of the, you know, just so you know, a lot of the listeners here are going to be in the housewares industry or the home and hardware industry. And, and, uh, if you don't have a brand that, I mean, that that's <clears throat> Amazon is going to displace you and owning a brand and owning the customer and owning your own direct channel is, is just, it's, it's essential. So, you know, what you do is, is absolutely essential. Um, but also it's, it's great to learn more about it because I don't have a lot of um, experience understanding the, those timelines. And it sounds like, you know, you're, you're launching new brands that, and I can understand that taking longer. Do you ever relaunch current brands? You know, what if, Oh yeah. And, and, and let's walk through that process. So maybe a company's already got a decent brand. Of course, maybe they need more imagery or different imagery, but they haven't um, actually done quote unquote branding. They've just They've got a good brand. It's out there already. They have great sales history, but they haven't worked on branding. By the way, this is a very common um, in our industry. Uh, and tell us about timelines, specific timelines there, and also activities that you would do for those companies. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a strong brand like Coca-Cola, for instance. They're always rebranding themselves. They're updating the graphics. They're trying to stay current. Uh, so, yeah, we do that a lot. And like I say, a, a brand strategy should last you 15 to 20 years unless you're like in a, a trendy business like fashion or something. Um, so every 15 or 20 years, a brand's going to seem kind of stale and you need to revitalize it. And we could we often come in and do that. And that can be done fairly quickly, like within a, a couple of months. Um, but it, it, again, uh, every job's a custom job. So you, you can't really uh, make cookie cutter predictions. Um, yeah. So yeah, we we can come in. We can uh, look at their brand strategy. Maybe they have outgrown it. Uh, for instance, we did uh, the original brand for Staples Center. Oh wow! And their brand, uh, their promise. Uh, I'm sorry, their their purpose statement uh, at the time was we're bringing nightlife back to downtown Los Angeles. Nothing about basketball or hockey. Nothing about concerts. It's just nightlife in general. And now, 20 years later, you can see that they've lived up to that promise. I mean, downtown Los Angeles is booming now compared to what it was 20 years ago. Uh, but now they've kind of outgrown that uh, that promise, that purpose statement. So they need to start thinking about what they're going to be for the next 20 years. And that's where we would come in. And, you know, how can we keep close to our customers while we're closed for a pandemic? You spoke about communication um, any other thoughts um, on that in, in, in relation to COVID-19? And, and luckily, just so you know, a lot of, so 
you know, for the listeners here, you, you, you're going to have a lot of brands that are still open because a lot of them are essential to the supply chain. Um, right. Even products you wouldn't think about, they're, they're still shipping. Uh, what where the huge disruption in this industry has been his physical store closures. Um, yes. And, and that's been really difficult. But I imagine there's some other types of brands and companies and, of course, restaurants that are closed or, or you know, only take out. And so, you know, how do we keep close to our customers in that sense? Um, would love to hear your thoughts on that. Well, I know of one retail chain, a national chain. I, I can't say their name because they're not a client of mine. But I know that they're setting up newsletters, emailing customers. They have a good list. Uh, uh, they're running um, uh, promotions that they can, uh, I guess they're mailing them out or, uh, you know, mail the product out. Uh, so they're, they're still keeping their sales up that way. They're keeping their online sales going. Um, but they've had to close all their stores. And uh, that means they send all their employees home. And that's the second part of the communication thing is you got to keep your, your staff. You know, like they're laid off. They're sitting at home alone. They're wondering what their future is. Uh, uh, this particular chain is uh, guaranteeing everybody's paid through April but nobody knows what happens at the end of April. But what they're doing is they're having Zoom sessions where they uh, get the staff of every particular store onto a Zoom session. So they don't have to be alone through this. They can, uh, uh, the store can, uh, the chain can uh, relate the latest news, what's going on, what they're thinking about the futures it's going to hold, that sort of thing. And uh, then the employees get that camaraderie too. Uh, by seeing each other, talking to each other, laughing with each other. Yep. So that's a, a great way to keep the staff engaged. And um, if you had to lay anybody off. Luckily in this industry, so there haven't been, which we're really blessed and fortunate, there haven't been a lot of massive layoffs, you know, because companies can work remote. But definitely to your point, you know, communication is is so important and, and companies have all had to adapt either Zoom or Teams or something like that. And Right. Yeah. Right. So, and then, you know, getting, getting back to the basics, because um, I know it's an easy question to ask, but sometimes uh, the definition isn't what everybody expects, but you know what, from your eyes, what really is a brand and what is a brand strategy? Uh, good questions. Um, a brand is basically the relationship between a marketable asset and its market. Um, and the way it kind of works is if, if the brand, if the management of the brand uh, knows what its brand promises and brand promises that thing that's unique about your product or your service. Um, if, if it's clear on what its brand promises and then it makes that brand promise to the market through marketing communications and then it keeps that uh, brand promise, uh, then the market will begin to reward uh, uh, the brand with, uh, with brand loyalty. And so you have the symbiotic relationship going where the business knows its brand promise, makes its brand promise, keeps its brand promise, delivers on it, uh, and then gets rewarded with brand loyalty. Um, so the brand is really what grows in the covenant there. Uh, and and the longer you can keep that cycle going, uh, the stronger the brand gets and the more valuable it gets. Um, that's why I say three to four years for it to get up to full strength, because it just takes a while for that uh, process to work itself out. So that's what a that's what a brand is, at least from our point of view. Um, and th that's another problem is that there are a million different definitions of brand. But that's the one we work on, and that's the one we've had success with. Uh, a brand strategy is making a business case for why a product or service or business itself uh, should be positioned in a particular way um, to gain comp competitive advantage over the rivals. Um, so that's when we go out and we do our research. We we talk to customers, we talk to employees, we talk to you know, bankers, any any constituency that um, any group whose perception of the brand is important to its future. We want to hear from all of those, and we look for common themes that go across constituencies. Um, that's how we figure out you know what really is unique about this business and uh, and where we should be putting our marketing emphasis. So that's that's putting a strategy together. Yeah. And then uh, uh, I don't know if you want to get into how far into this you want to get, but we create what's called brand platforms. Uh, and that's like a political platform is, is based on planks. And those planks are like 
uh, here's where we stand on foreign policy, here's where we stand on uh, fiscal policy, et cetera, et cetera. Well, uh, Bram's uh, platform is similar. It's made up of planks, but the planks are statements like a, a purpose statement, a mission statement, a positioning statement, and a brand promise. And we write all that up for our clients, formalize it, codify it, get everybody to sign off, and uh, then we take it from there. It makes total sense to me. I think the hardest part, I don't know if, the, if you share this, because you are, you are on the other end of it, you're creating it. But um, the hardest part is probably living the brand strategy all the way through, you know, because there's, okay, you're putting some, you know, stakes in the ground and saying, this is what we're going to do. And then you, you know, your brand has all these promises and it only works if you touch enough people, I guess, that then give you that loyalty because they've received that positive interaction of your promise. But that can take a long time. And then through those times, you know, there's choppy waters and, and um, that's probably a challenge every day for brands to maintain uh, that course, um, I'm guessing. Do, do you see it the same way or um, what are your thoughts on that? Absolutely right. And that's why we have what I mentioned before we call brand agency. We're, we, stay, we stick with our clients uh, to make sure that uh, everything stays on brand because every marketing communication has an advertising message and a branding message. And the advertising message might be, uh, I can't think of one now because everything's closed. <laughs> but yeah. let's let's say you 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 had a, a bar or something, and you wanted uh, you wanted to fill up Tuesday nights, uh, which are for bars are traditionally not very profitable. So you decide to have ladies' night, right? So that's the message. That's the advertising message: ladies' night on Tuesdays. Uh, but the branding message is: well, what's going to happen at this? <laughs> At this bar on Tuesday night, is it going? Are you going to play country music? Are you going to play R and B? Or you know, so the way you dress up that message is is going to keep that message on brand. So, so you have your advertising message and you have your branding message. And what happens when people uh, don't like keep us on for long term, or or they don't keep somebody on, or on, there's nobody on staff who's thinking about branding every day, um they can forget about the branding message and just put out the advertising message and then the brand weakens. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, you have to keep people on board and you have to keep uh, vigilant as to, you know, what your brand is. And that's why brands are all CEO driven uh, because the CEO is the only person who has the, uh, the authority and the reach to get everybody on the team um, uh, behind the brand. Um Remember I said that you have to know what your brand promise is. That requires you to put on a strategic thinking cap. Uh, you have to make your brand promise. That's all your advertising, all your marketing. But you have to deliver on your brand promise, and that's all your operations. That's the things that businesses are doing every day already. Uh, so it takes the whole company to build a strong brand. It's just not something that the marketing department does. It's a great answer. And, and I specifically wrote down that they're CEO driven. And I think for the audience, that's a big takeaway and, and they're hard to maintain. And, and you have to maintain this, you know, within your marketing message and um, over a long period of time. So definitely interesting. I guess that's a challenge. And that's why strong brands are so valuable, especially, you know, in this market um, that we're in right now. And Kevin, I'd like to know more. Um, I know we can't dive into all the tactics, but like, what are you seeing from, so when you do the agencies part of it, so, you know, it sounds like you would be driving some of their marketing. I'm sure some's on social and uh, some is text, um, not text on the phone. It may be, but I mean, uh, you know, Google text ads and I'm just, I'm just guessing, but like, what does that look like, um, you know, from a branding agency perspective, is that encompass all of their digital marketing or do you just simply take over a couple of channels and then which channels um, have worked best for you um, more recently just with a lot of changes that have happened in social um, is that still where the strength is well our our clients you know they're all different and um, we try to adapt to what they need if they need us to do everything we do everything um, right now I don't think we have any clients like that uh, more like we come in from time to time to advise help them uh, uh, get back on brand if they're straying off, that sort of thing. Um, in terms of what's working, I think, well, what's going to work a lot better, I mean, it's already working well, is uh, online. Um, but 
with everybody staying home, I think online is going to be uh, even stronger. So that could include social media, that include pay-per-click type ad uh, campaigns, um, all those sorts of things. So th- that's where I put my money now. <laughs> it, make, it makes total sense. I mean, the whole world is going to change with this. So I think so. That's why it's, um, yeah, I mean, even from products we source and everything. I think we will get back to, I hate this expression, a new normal, um, but it'll be a different normal. I mean, I mean, I mean, it think, some things won't ever go back to the way they were. Uh, I think, I think there's going to be a lot more working at home. Yep. And uh, when people go out, it'll be out, they'll be going out for a specific purpose and not just to hang out at the mall or something. Yeah. Well, listen, um, really enjoyed this chat. Kevin and uh, learned a lot and took a good notes and a lot of good notes and, and hopefully the listeners, you know, found this valuable, you know, knowing that, you know, brands are CEO driven and we really have to hold on to that brand promise. And, you know, it's that, that relationship between that asset and the market. And I think those are a couple of the key things that I took out of this. Um, and again, want to thank you for joining me on the page one podcast and sharing your knowledge with our audience. And uh, before I let you go, I know you got an ebook and also just wanted to give you the opportunity to mention how listeners can find you or get a hold of you. Oh, sure. Thank you. Um, yeah, the ebook is called A Brand is a Promise Kept, and it's available on my website on the publications page. So that would be boardwalkhq.com. Boardwalk, like the Monopoly game, HQ, like headquarters.com slash publications. And there's uh, the ebooks there along with a couple of white papers. And if you download the ebook, um, I'm in the middle of writing a second book, uh, which hopefully will be out this year. Uh, but again, everything's kind of, there's a monkey wrench thrown in the works there too. Uh, but that one is called the New CEO's Branding Handbook. So if you download a brand as a promise kept, you'll also get um, the New CEO's Branding Handbook. And it's all free, by the way. There's that. And you can always reach me on LinkedIn. Uh, Kevin J. Walker, Boardwalk on LinkedIn, or at my website, uh, boardwalkhq.com, or you can reach me by email, kevin at boardwalkla.com. Yeah. Great. We'll have that in the show notes for all the listeners. So I know sometimes it's a lot to write down during a podcast, so we'll we'll drop that in the bottom of the show notes, but I'm looking forward to the next ebook and and definitely will look to download that and hope the audience does too and, and uh, su- supports another small business. And that, that's what we have to be thinking about in these times. And just want to thank everybody for listening to this episode of the Page One Podcast sponsored by Retail Band. And quick reminder, I'm offering a free evaluation of your online sales strategy. We can take a look at how you're doing on Amazon, Home Depot, Wayfair, uh, Walmart, other online retailers, which are more important now than ever. And we can take a look at your products and selling tools. Uh, and we'll present our findings directly to you. And it's, it's all free for this free evaluation. And you can email me at luke at retailband.com. Hope you enjoyed the interview today. Truly appreciate all of your reviews on iTunes and hope you join us for the next episode. Thanks for listening to the Page One Podcast with Luke Peters. If you like our show and want to know more, check out our other segments. Also, please help us out by leaving us a rating on iTunes. Want to learn more about our commerce? Check out www.retailband.com to get more great tips and tricks on how to accelerate your e-commerce sales with the big box retailers.